we're going on an anniversary date. We're trying to go on our first date in a long, long time, our eighth anniversary date. And there is a concrete truck parked in the middle of the road trying to pour a strip of curb, country curb. There's no curbs for miles around, but they're pouring a curb right here on the side of the road. So we made it past the concrete truck and we're pulling into one of our favorite little coffee shops and it has a gallery next to it and we're just gonna go and we're gonna walk through the gallery and look at the things and drink our coffee. Which may sound boring, but it's actually a dream come true. One little hitch. We have a sick baby who we didn't want to leave at home with the babysitter, so he's coming with us. He's sleeping back there right now. That is awesome. Oh, good. <laughs> place. It was so, so, so much fun. Did you have fun? Yeah. Do you like shopping like that? Yeah. You don't buy anything. You just look at everything that you love. Hey, buddy. We love you. Do you remember the first time we actually met each other? <sighs> I remember the first time I remember we actually met each other. What was I wearing? <laughs> yeah, we were going to a tiny little house church together. I first went there with a good friend of mine, and he said, hey, come with me to this little house church. So we drove, it was almost an hour, drove down there, and there was a bunch of hippies and people with dreadlocks. There were people in the house singing worship music. There were people playing drums inside. There were people laying in the grass in the yard. There were people everywhere around this house. And I thought it was pretty crazy. <laughs> and Brianna was going there. She had been going there for a while. It turned out to be a really sweet place that we connected and got to know a lot of people. We still have a lot of friends who went there, even though that group of people isn't meeting these days. The guy that he's talking about that introduced him to this house church, I actually ended up dating. <clears throat> and while I was dating him, I went to Kenya and Uganda for a few months. The day I got back, this is a very important part of this story. The day I got back, I'm still dating his friend. Somebody called me that day. Literally, I got in at like four in the morning. They called me at like nine and they're like, hey, you're back. What do you want to do tonight? Arthur's having a birthday party. You should come. So I went to the birthday party and he is like so interested in my trip and had all these ideas about different things I had learned and said, hey, I have these two hogs that I raised and I'm about to butcher them or I'm about to slaughter them next weekend. Do you want to come? I worked all day long with him butchering these two hogs or slaughtering these two hogs. It was really hard work. It was just his family and me and this other guy. But that was the day that I fell head over heels for art. I don't know, I mean, I kinda think I know what it was, but I felt like he just was like strong and like knew all these cool skills that I had never learned. And he was like in charge of the situation, yet very gentle. And he's also like really stoic. It's kinda hard to tell now, cause he's changed a lot. But back then he was like, really stoic and I just found that very mysterious <laughs> I did <laughs> and so but I was still dating his friend and his friend was now in Africa so I like couldn't I was so confused because this guy was awesome there was nothing wrong with him he was a great guy and actually we are still friends with him and his wife and their kids great great guy but I had really fallen for Arthur. So I didn't, I was so confused. I didn't know what to do. Did you know I was dating him? 
Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know the status of your relationship. Oh yeah. After that, we just started hanging out all the time as friends. And I did so quickly after a breakup with the, with the guy that I was seeing. And um, Arthur and I just hung out all the time. We're stuck in traffic again. Hog killing day. That was a pivotal moment in our relationship. I remember we were out there. It was probably November. It was December. It was December and it was freezing cold and I got out there before sunrise and was getting all the water hoses thawed out so we could have water available. And we killed these two hogs. And I remember this one moment when I really said, this is someone who I could spend time with. We had the hogs, we had cut them into pieces, and when you butcher hogs, um, there is a lot of work to do to process all the parts of the animal um, so that nothing goes to waste. And the heads are always a challenge. You can't really get any cuts of meat off the heads except for the jowls that doesn't really count as the head though and so i was hoping to not let these two hog heads go to waste so i looked around at all the people who are working with me and i said who wants to take this hog's head and scrape all the hair off of it and get it ready to cook into head cheese and so you can imagine I was holding it by the ear and these were huge hogs. I raised them to about 400 pounds. They were giant, huge head, holding it by the ear, covered with blood. And Brianna says, I'll do it. So she grabbed it by the ear and carried it off and started working on it. And that's when I said, I like this lady. So we've arrived at this spot we're gonna eat and there's some folks up here doing a really neat craft project I wanted to show you. They call it eco dyeing, and they're wrapping oak leaves and eucalyptus leaves, um, wrapping it up in paper and in silk, and then boiling it to dye fabric with the natural tannins in the oak and the eucalyptus. You don't want to get that. We're gonna have to learn how to do that. That's amazing and so beautiful. About six months later, I got up the nerve and <laughs> asked Brianna out on our first date. And she just reminded me that I didn't pick her up. I had her meet me at a square dance. Well, the reason was because I was hosting my best friend's um, wedding shower so he couldn't pick me up because I had to go do that first I so, still so. remember what she was wearing she was wearing a white dress with flowers on the front <laughs> well that's because I have a picture <laughs> so there we are on our first date it was actually a square dance my mom was calling and we just danced the night away we really did. The thing about square dancing or contra dancing is you may dance with your partner, but you're going to dance with a lot of other people too. But every now and then they sneak in a waltz where you only dance with your partner the whole time. And those, of course, were my favorite because I didn't have to give up my partner. <laughs> do you remember how much we love dancing together? We do love dancing and we haven't danced together for a long time. It's a little bit harder to be graceful with this big fella in between us. Yes, it is. It's so fun. I remember, don't fuss. I would just permagrin when we were dancing. You would too. <laughs> it was wonderful. We're kind of telling you the short version of the story. A year and a half later, we got married. We wanted to have a really simple wedding. And we did. We had the wedding at my parents' property uh, where they have their garden. You may have seen in some of our videos. I think the most expensive thing was my wedding dress. My mom had it made for me. And two weeks before the wedding, Arthur says, I want to make it a potluck. 
I don't want to. I don't want your mom to buy all this food. I want it to be more like community oriented. And I was like totally stressed out by that. I said, if you and your mom deal with it, then fine. Let's make it a potluck. My mom will get the barbecue. And you guys did great. It was awesome. There was tons of good food. A lot of it was like from people's gardens. The barbecue was incredible. And we did not have wedding cake. I like cake now, but back then I did not like cake. We had pie. Pumpkin pie and apple pie. I remember we had it left over in the freezer for like two years. <laughs> we had a giant bonfire after all the celebrations. The bonfire was so big that the ashes coming down from the fire actually burned holes in tablecloths that we had rented. It was probably the most fun day of my life so far. It was so exciting. Of course we had a dance. We had a dance. Your cousin in played the grass. and your mom called. And my sisters played music in the ceremony. Yeah. And it was a beautiful day just like today. <laughs> now we're going to show you the spot where we are. Yeah. Look at this view. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. Mm. Give me a better one than that. Oh. Not on camera. <laughs> where are you going, honey? So the baby was fussing and it's not a real fancy restaurant but it's pretty nice and there's no other kids there and he was being really loud and yelling and stuff and so we decided we were gonna go somewhere a little more family friendly we found a new place to eat we think it's a little more family friendly and this view is just as incredible as the other one <laughs> 